With the release of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void signaling the end of the StarCraft II trilogy that began all the way back in 2010, there... Holy crap, that's like five fucking years ago. Jesus fucking Christ. I was, I was 22. I was so young. So innocent. There's so many things have happened. I, need, I think I need to go lay down. Now seems like an appropriate time to take a look back on the historical, literary, and pop culture references that are found throughout the series. Even Blizzard admits that when they first began developing StarCraft, it started out as nothing more than a science fiction twist on their already popular Warcraft series. But being Blizzard, the level of polish, detail, and care put into the series has helped craft it into an identity of its own. Get it? Craft? Because it's StarCraft- I'll just see myself out. Let's start with Valerian Minsk, the only son of the Emperor. Players first met Valerian in StarCraft II, but he was actually created much earlier than that by writer Christy Golden in the 2007 novel StarCraft Dark Templar Firstborn. Originally, the character was going to be named Augustus after the famed Roman Emperor. This idea was later dropped, but the name Valerian has Roman roots as well. Valerian the Elder was also an Emperor of Rome in 253 AD and holds the dubious distinction of being the only Roman ruler to be captured by enemy forces. His capture at the hands of the Persians caused a short era of instability in the Roman Empire. Whether a similar fate awaits Valerian Mengsk remains to be seen. The Terran Confederacy is an obvious reference to the Confederacy Army of the American Civil War, but there's a few other references to that war as well. The planet of New Gettysburg, where the Battle of New Gettysburg took place, was inspired by the real Battle of Gettysburg, the defining battle of the American Civil War. Even the Terran Campaign is called Rebel Yell, a reference to the Confederate Army's infamous battle cry. Now, let's take a look at some of the military forces in the series. The Terran Firebats hero class unit, Guy Montag, is named in reference to Guy Montag, the protagonist of Ray Bradbury's classic book, Fahrenheit 451. This is sitting since the Montag of Bradbury's book is a man tasked with burning books and StarCraft's Montag is a fire unit. Tom Kazansky, the hero class unit of the Terran Wraith, is known as the best Wraith pilot in the Terran Dominion. It makes sense then that he shares his name with Tom Iceman Kazansky, expert fighter pilot and Tom Cruise's rival in 1986's Top Gun. I wonder if he's as good at volleyball though. And yes, I did just write that awkward segue so I could have an excuse to put this clip in our show. Ah, uh, look at that. So much testosterone. What were we talking about? Oh shit, uh, Star StarCraft. The hero class unit of the Zerg Ultralisk, Torask, is believed by many to be a reference to the Dungeons and Dragons Tarask, but its name could also be a modified version of the name Tarask. The Tarask was a mythological dragon hybrid that comes from old French legends and shares a similar shell design to the Torask. That's not all, of course. Calling back to the series' 90s roots, the developers of Blizzard have confirmed that the character James Raynor is a shout out to James Ryan or as he's better known, Private Ryan, Matt Damon's character in Spielberg's World War II epic, which some of you may remember is the movie your dad likes I talked about in the 90s episode of Fallout. Don't be salty, dad. It's okay. I like the movie too. The villain in the Enslavers campaign, Alan Shizar, is a name taken from a different source, anime. Alan Shizar is a blonde expert swordsman in Visions of Escaflown, which I probably totally butchered the pronunciation of. It's a Japanese animated series from the mid 90s. The connection between the two characters may not be clear, but it's worth noting that both of them are quite badass mecha pilots. And of course, StarCraft's beloved General Duke is named after America's most famous cowboy, John Wayne, who is often known by his nickname, The Duke. Lastly, we have a pure Easter egg. What StarCraft game would be complete without a reference to its sister series Warcraft? So, understandably, StarCraft II Heart of the Swarm includes a reference to the classic World of Warcraft expansion Wrath of the Lich King, where the armor of the Lich King himself can be spotted in the side of a cliff on the frozen planet Kaldir. Thank you for watching our first StarCraft episode of Hidden History. Be sure to like and subscribe for more StarCraft. Oh, and share. We'd love to make more StarCraft videos, but we need your support to do it. If we don't get enough views on this, it's back to the salt mines of Fallout for me. Then all the music there is from when my grandpa was 11. All right, so last week we asked you what real world object made the sound you hear when firing the Fat Man nuclear catapult, and you did not disappoint. Almost all of you are right. It is the sound of Bethesda Office's lunch bell, which is 
kind of weird. Are, are the Bethesda offices in an old high school? Why are there bells? I need to know why are there bells? So here's a StarCraft question for Tychus you. Tychus Findlay was a convicted felon under the number 626. This is a reference to what animated film? Is it A, Treasure Planet, B, Lilo and Stitch, C, Toy Story, or D, Monsters, Inc.? You will be graded on this later.